How many of you have one person you owe everything to? How many of you have this one person that is almost like your guardian angel? Or even like your conscience? Someone that looks out for you and that you would be completely lost without. Most people attribute this to their best friend, their parents, a close relative, a coach or mentor of some kind, or even a significant other. Today, I want to talk to you about my person, how she has helped me, and how, in my opinion, she could help all of us. For she has been my inspiration, and has shaped my character to developing me a passion for knowledge and a determination to progress as a person, making me more empathetic, analytical, and arguably a better reasoner. Well, maybe it's not about a person at all, but I did meet something that fulfilled this role as a mentor. History. That's right, I met history. So then why did I talk about meeting a person in the first place? To exemplify what a large role the study of history and its characters had on the shaping of my personality and how much I care for it. Just as these people you may know have shaped your personalities and how much you care for them. So how did I meet history? I first, met, I first met history through a book I picked up at school on Alexander the Great when I was 10 years old. For years I had been fascinated by mythology, which is why I became so interested in Greece. However, after reading about Alexander, I was convinced that there was no greater epic than that of the deed of men the foundations of society, the complexity of the human nature and the basis of development as a race. History. But despite how interesting Alexander's story was, it happened circa 300 BCE. So how did events that happened more than 2000 years ago shape my present? And more importantly, how can the study of our yesterdays improve all of our todays? Most people see history almost as a reference book, something we need so that we don't commit the same mistakes as we did in the past. However, most people don't actually use it in this way. I mean, how often do you hear someone say, today I learned about the transatlantic slave trade, for example. Now I know that I shouldn't whip a person for not getting me a bag full of grain, or enslave them based on the color of their skin. I mean, if there's any hope for humanity whatsoever, most people already knew this before stopping the transatlantic slave trade. On a personal level, we are constantly learning from things that happen to us. Still, becoming a wiser and more insightful person is not something we would describe as learning from the mistakes I made when I was 19 years, 3 months and 9 days old, but rather incorporating these lessons into our character. I don't even remember when and for what it was that I got punished for but I did acquire values and beliefs through those experiences, thus becoming a more mature and successful person. Just as a person's experiences shape who this person is, history shapes up society as a whole. Thus, the study of history is not simply looking at every mistake humanity has made, make a list of them and vow not to repeat them. The study of history implies analyzing and incorporating historical events as a means to help us develop as a society, shaping us to move towards a better future, making us more empathetic and aware of other cultures, and amplifying our knowledge of the humankind. But how does knowing that the Hundred Years' War actually lasts 160 years help us understand humanity? This may seem actually pointless, and it is, aside from the satisfaction of knowing the fun fact. This may seem contradictory to my previous statements, but this is only because knowing that it lasted 116 years is not history. Well, it is a small part of history, but it is by no means what will help us develop as a society. Knowing places, names and dates is useful, but only to set the right context that will help us understand the events. They are not the understanding itself. Let me tell you an interesting story. Herodotus of Halicarnassus is often seen as the father of history and the first historian. He wasn't the first person to record history, Greeks had done it for centuries. But history took the shape of a simple list of events that happened as a result of the will of the gods. 
Herodotus was born in the Persian Empire, in a Greek community in the region of Anatolia, in modern-day Turkey. During his time, in the first half of the 5th century BCE, the Greco-Persian Wars were fought. He, being Greek and living in the Persian Empire, dedicated his life to the history of the war, trying out a new genre, focusing not on a list of events, but on the reasons and causes for these events, the perspectives of different people based on the moral values of the time, and the effect on both countries. Thus, he started recording the history that we know today, one which focuses not simply on the events, but the people that lived them and the effect they had on the societies of the time, as well as their effect nowadays. This is how we should study history to develop as a society. To benefit from the lessons of history, we must pay attention to different ideologies and philosophies and debate the topics. This is also the way in which Lorenzo di Piero di Medici saw Florence to greatness in the late 15th century. He organized a continental scale book hunt, seeking to retrieve some of the most ancient texts from all of Europe, searching in monasteries, libraries, and ruins. Lorenzo adopted Herodotus' approach and studied history not for the sake of it, but with the intention of studying ancient culture and ancient philosophy as a means to improve his own times. Thus he invested in art and architecture and made Florence a hub of culture and economics of the Renaissance, gaining him the title of Il Magnifico or the Magnificent. Finally, studying history gives us a sense of belonging and is crucial to the existence of national identity. As humans, we crave to belong to a group. We strive to find a family and we work tirelessly to find our place in society. Especially in these times of disunity and stagnation, we need history to create bonds and to unify us. Studying our own backgrounds, that is, our history, is what gives us identity as a people. Herodotus not only studied the different perspectives of the war, he used his works as a means to advocate for a Greek identity. At his time, Greece wasn't a unified country, but rather a collection of several small independent city-states. Contrary to popular belief, this wasn't due to a lack of central leadership which took the Greeks into chaos and disunity, but rather a lack of identity. Greeks didn't see themselves as such. Sparta a Greek city-state, even went on to support Persia in a war against Athens, another Greek city-state, some years later. Herodotus had a vision of a unified Greece, and with time, his ideas started to kick in. The shared culture and history he exemplified in his works eventually shaped Greek identity, and still now, 2.5 thousand years later, studying history can help us develop an identity as a people, as a country, and as humans. So I beg you, study history. Our society and our culture are in dire need of the study of history, that which led the European states to greatness 500 years ago. We need history to improve upon it and to seek for solutions to our problems. History can give us identity and can help us grow as a society. It can develop our understanding of cultures and different problems we face and to help us make educated decisions and reasonings. For ignorance and carelessness are to the core of human misery. So make history your guardian angel. Invite her into your house and talk to her. Get to know her. For not only will she help you achieve a personal development, but also she will help us all achieve greatness as a society. And don't study history for the sake of it, study history for the sake of us. Thank you.